Welcome back to AM Northwest. The Bugs are back. Inspired by the world of Disney and the hit Pixar movie, A Real Bugs Life returns for a second season, taking us on an extraordinary adventure into the real world of insects and the challenges they face. Heavy rain means biblical floods in Bugland. And when you're this small, you can ride out the storm in style. With raised sides, her nest is built to survive floods as well as fire. Finally, the storm has passed. We welcome from National Geographic's A Real Bug's Life scientific consultant and bug wrangler, Dr. Tim Cockrell. Good to have you with us. That is just amazing. How do you do that? Oh, it's a very complicated jigsaw puzzle that we have to put together. First of all, we, we've got uh, nearly two million insects to choose from. So we first of all have to, to choose which ones we're going to focus on. But now this is the first time, actually, we've been making natural history wildlife documentaries for decades and decades. But this is the first time where things have come together. So we've got a, a kind of crux of scientific knowledge. So we understand more than we've ever understood about the, the lives of these tiny creatures. But now we've got the technology for the first time to unlock those lives. So those old fashioned documentaries where it feels a bit like watching a kind of, kind of theater production or an academic lecture. Well, now we can get deep down up close and personal with these tiny insects with our special cameras and our special lenses. And of course, the, uh, the background knowledge of all the bugs too. Okay, and what I find fascinating too is that it was inspired by the anim animated version of A Bug's Life because clearly then, I mean, it was it that you then saw people were really interested in A Bug's Life? Absolutely, yeah. And it, of course, The Bug's Life is all about the stories of the bugs, isn't it? Yeah. And what we really want to show in this program is to unlock the stories in the lives of these small, small animals. You know, we're used to empathizing with bigger animals than the mammals and the birds and reptiles and things that are much more closely related to us as humans. But of course, there are far more species of bugs than all of those other things put together. But in the lives of these bugs, they have all of the dramas, the same dramas that go on in the lives of these big animals. They're all looking for a mate. They're looking for somewhere to live, looking for somewhere to raise their babies. And so but we, we want to follow those stories as well. And that's what the original uh, animated film did. And that's what we want to do. But we're telling the real stories, the real Bugs Life. Do you, um, from, from, uh, from um, first season to second season, did you learn anything from the first season? Yeah, I mean, we, we were filming for years and years, actually, and we're spend, sending teams out into these remote locations in, in the forests of Australia and rainforests of Borneo and Costa Rica. Um, and so it was a continuous process. You know, every single time we went out on a shoot, well, we came back and we learned new things. First of all, about how to use the, the camera technology, yeah. but more than anything, how to how to, to get the bugs to, to do what they were supposed to do in the right kind of place without manipulating them. You know, we, we're filming genuine behavior. This is not like making a, a kind a feature film and a movie where you can have bugs on uh, on tap you know in, in in tanks and cages they're all filmed uh, they're all wild bugs and so we uh, learning about the behavior of the bugs and how to uh, how to elicit the behavior and how to capture that behavior is the, the most difficult wow. thing wow tell me about the tiger beetle yeah, yeah. So this was on a beach in Borneo, and actually, the person you can see with the net in her hand—that's my partner, Lucia. So I was, uh, I was back at home, and we sent her off to this beach in Borneo to capture these tiger beetles. There she is, um, and and these are a beetle. First of all, we know very, very little about them. They've never been filmed before, and they're so fast, right? They're they're incredibly fast. One of the fastest running animals. And if you if you scale them up to the size of a human, it would be the equivalent of a human running about seven hundred miles an hour. Wow. They run so quickly that they actually go blind when they run so they have to kind of look where they're going and they set off and their brain can't catch up with the speed at which they run and so it made filming them and catching them in the first place an immense challenge and so we've got one of our episodes is the behind the scenes episode where we let you in on to, to some of the secrets behind filming uh, the behind the scenes of a real bug's life and so if you watch that one you'll find out exactly how we filmed it and the challenges that we really faced trying to capture this very tiny but very very fast predator of the insect world wow okay a uh, luna moth yeah, Luna moss, they're one of my favorite insects. And of course, they're from the forest of, of North America, you know, right, really close to home for, uh, for you guys. 
they're beautiful things. And so what we're looking at here in this photo is a male lunar moth. And we can tell it's a male because he's got those big feathery antennae. And those antennae are actually, they're a very finely evolved molecular sieve. And he can filter out a single molecule of this perfume that the female moths produce. So the female moths emerge and they sit in the tree flapping their wings and producing this irresistible perfume that floats across the forest. And these males can pick up a single molecule of the perfume and that's what they use to, uh, to track down the female. So yeah, really beautiful thing. They're very characterful, a little bit bumbling, a little bit clumsy as well, but, but really fascinating. Oh, insects. that's so great. Okay, now one of my favorites is the damselflies. Mm. Tell me about that, because they look like cartoons. They look they animated. Do, they? It's, it's, a, it's a bit of a gift as filmmakers to have an insect that has a nice face like that. We're right? Insects with a face that have a nice character. But again, they've got a really fascinating life cycle because, of course, they spend most of their life underwater. And so we film these in a, a garden pond or a village pond in, uh, in a county in the UK. And uh, they're, they're beautiful insects and we can see them flying around these diaphanous creatures. They reflect the light. They have these metallic colors and beautiful big eyes. But for most of their lives, they're actually a voracious predator and they live underneath the water for most of their lives and they catch other uh, living things. Sometimes they catch fish and sometimes even tadpoles. Um, and so, yeah, fascinating, fascinating creatures with a real, the real Jekyll and Hyde of, uh, of the insect world. Oh my gosh, I love this. It is absolutely incredible. We want to tell our viewers season two of National Geographic's A Real Bug's Life premieres Wednesday on Disney+. Plus. Dr. Tim Cockrell, thank you so much. You, I love your enthusiasm for it too. It's great. <laughs> it's great to talk bugs. <laughs> All right. We'll be right back with more AM Northwest. Don't go away.